The Overwhelm is Optional podcast is for you if you want to quit the struggle with overwhelm. You want to live life to the full. You don't want to compromise your health and relationships in order to have well-paid, satisfying, meaningful work. You want it all on your terms. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Overwhelm is Optional podcast with me, your host, Heidi Mark, trying to make overwhelm optional for as many people as possible. No, actually not as many people as possible, very specifically for the loveliest people in the world. That's my clients and my students and my listeners, I believe, when I get to meet you, which I am farting to get to meet you because I've been doing these very special free coaching sessions called Breakthrough into Spring. If you haven't yet booked one, if you're still kind of going, oh, but I have to answer the questions on the form, or I'm sure she wouldn't give it away for free. Is she going to try and sell me something? Or I can't make time. It's not worth it. It's too hard. I'm too overwhelmed to get any help with overwhelm. Cut that out right now. I I don't do things like this very often because, um, well, I don't because I'm running a business and I can't give away free stuff all the time. But right now I am still taking bookings for because it's still spring and I'm super excited about it and I find it really energising and it's such a joy to sit down and do a coaching session with you, my listeners. It's just really, really nice. It's actually really helpful for me to meet you and often from those conversations and in the process of helping you cut through the overwhelm and leave you with some practical tools to be taking forward to make your life even better. Um, In those conversations I get to know you and find out what's resonating with this podcast and what kind of things are coming up for you that I haven't yet covered. So it works, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. If you'd rather um, book a call to talk about working with me one-to-one, then don't use the booking link for the Breakthrough to Spring because that's a different link. Go to my website and book a discovery call if you want to work with me. These are purely um, standalone springtime special. So go and book one right now before you forget. And all the links you need for that are in the show notes just below this episode. So I look forward to talking to you soon. So how are you doing? I hope that you are well and happy and it's really lovely to have you here. This is going to be quite a quick episode. I've actually rebelled. I recorded one and then, I don't know, I'm having a really rebellious week and I just... I was walking in the garden just now and I thought, no, I'm just going to shake it up a bit. So this week's episode is all about my kind of fundamental of of how I work and and how I explore my own way of living, which is the phrase which some people love, but some people feel quite triggered by. So see what comes up for you as I say it. You are both perfect and a work in progress. You are both perfect and a work in progress. So what comes up for you? So for some people, it's an utter relief. It's like, thank God, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with me. And for other people, it's like, I really don't like the word perfect. So that's what I want to talk about today is this word perfect. Um, And I'm not talking about perfectionism, not in this episode. I'm talking about the, because that's a habit, that's a, that's a, it's, it's, it's kind of connected, but it's not what I'm focusing on. I want to focus on those very words. You are perfect. So most people I work with are really happy with the idea that they're a work in progress because they're committed to personal growth and they want to live life to the full. And that requires um, kind of self-improvement, looking at ways to be happier, more productive, etc. So you can live a better, fuller life. But the whole you're perfect Now, that's an antidote, isn't it? It's an oxymoron, which I love. I love, love, love the playfulness of an oxymoron, the way it wakes us up, bit of cognitive dissonance. Woohoo! So you are perfect and a work in progress are opposites because how can both be true at the same time? And that's what I want to talk about. But also for people who are really fed up with the self-development cycle, when you get into this kind of like, I'm constantly having to improve myself. 
being being just hearing the words you are perfect it's like yes great brilliant <laughs> it doesn't mean that they never again doubt that you know it's like it's, it comes up for us right but for for people who are really struggling with the word perfect and i have students and clients that i work with who do struggle with it and that's okay i just really want to speak to that word perfect so what if we turn that around and say well there's two things i want to talk about first of all is the idea that you get to decide what perfect means and secondly the idea that it is your so-called flaws that make you perfect which sounds really bizarre right so first of all you get to decide what perfect means so if you just play with that idea for a moment um, it's worth kind of thinking okay what do I mean for me as perfect and within that there will be an element of change so what we think of as perfect tends to be quite fixed but actually we can never reach it because everything's always a moving thing so everything changes all the time so you can't reach perfect because like if you were doing it on like a body thing you know like if you were really into working out and you wanted this so-called perfect body you can't maintain it because your body changes all the time like it literally changes all the time as in your skin comes off and your hair falls out and is renewed and your brain cells are renewed and you know you have digestion it's like we are physically changing all the time so that the cells we have in our body are not identical to what they were yesterday so we are changing all the time though there isn't a static perfection and then if you take something that's already perfect like a piece of art your reactions to that change over time so although you might once have found like i've got really excited about particular paintings before and, and sought them out when i've been traveling and i've just been like oh they're so amazing and i felt really moved by it and not understood why other people are just chatting and walking past this amazing perfection and then the next time i've seen it i've kind of gone meh <laughs> and the painting didn't change but my reaction did so there's this transitory nature to perfection and there's this impossible thing about capturing perfection so what does it mean what when do you get to be perfect there it doesn't it so it kind of doesn't exist and then there's then within that is the idea that you get to decide anyway so for example if i if i kind of think okay what's like the perfect person so the perfect person is emotionally resilient they're self-aware they love and accept themselves so that when you're hanging out with them you know they're not offloading stuff at you they're like really they're always happy and they're really successful and have really good balance and there's really good role model and you know they're really fit and healthy and they take good care of themselves and they're generous and they're funny and the rest of it and as I do that, I'm getting to this stage where I think, yeah, and I don't want to hang out with them. Why? Because I can't connect with them because they don't have any vulnerability. They don't have any flaws. They don't have anything within them that makes me feel at ease, that makes me feel comfortable. When I, if I, have I ever met anybody who's perfect? No. And if I, if I meet somebody who I think, oh, I wish I was more like them, there's there's usually something about them that's connective it's not it's not i wish i was more like them because they're above me because then i feel inadequate and that 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 links into my always needing to improve thing which i'm in the process of giving up or i have given up but you know will can be reactivated in some way so i'm really aware of of boundaries over that so it's it's unhelpful it's not like I don't want to be friends with somebody who to me feels impossibly perfect and within that by definition that means they are not perfect can you see like i'm not interested i need my friends to be human i need them to 
um, need help occasionally. I need them to make mistakes and we can help each other out and laugh at things. Like I need them to mess up. I need them to not have the perfect body and the perfect hair and the perfect teeth and everything sussed. It's like, it's just not, it's just of no, it's of no like use to me to have a friend who's not real, you know? I love my friends because of who they are and because they love me with my mess up. So when we say perfect, what does it mean? A perfect what? Like, so take back control of that word. You get to decide what perfect means. You get to decide. So decide. And then if it's like this impossible thing that makes you feel rubbish about yourself, well, maybe you need to redo your definition of perfect. And that's where the work in progress isn't the opposite, because it's not it's not that somebody's already there. It's that somebody is able to talk things through, ask for help, be vulnerable, help you learn something, share something. It's a constantly moving thing. It's a it's a dance between people, isn't it? A friendship and, and, and life. So. Yeah, that's that's the first thing I want, wanted to say about that, that I hope gives you back some power so that when the word, if the word perfect in that beautiful, empowering, freeing phrase, you are both perfect and a work in progress, if it makes you feel, if it triggers any feelings of I'm not perfect, I'm more like the work in progress, then just pick apart, seriously look at what you mean by perfect, because it's, I'd argue it's not what you think, that, that there's more to uncover. For you personally, it's very, very personal. And the second thing is, which is, which is linked, because I've hinted at this in the friendship, it is our flaws that make us perfect. So a perfect friend for me is somebody who has some vulnerabilities, some, some so-called flaws, because then I can connect with them, then I can love them, then we can laugh together, then I can help them, you know, and and I have to have that equal exchange too. I have to be allowed to show up as myself. If I've got to show up as a perfect version of myself, then that's not going to work for me because I'm done with that. I'm done with putting on the suit of armour to go to work. I don't want to be putting on a suit you know, like a perfect friend suit to meet a friend for coffee. That doesn't mean I want to go as my worst person and be offloading and rubbish and falling to pieces and moaning. No, I want to show up as the best kind of friend I can, but I want to be accepted as myself. So for me, I need friends that when I'm going through a rough time, I can message them and say, I really need a friend today. And they will rearrange their schedule to fit me in and lift me up as soon as they can. That's the kind of friend I want. And they're not perfect as in they've got all of their stuff together. They're perfect as in they're the perfect friend for me in this moment. And within that, they have this lovely, gorgeous humanness. And I love them because I get to be me and they hopefully get to be them. And that matters. So it's the flaws, it's our flaws that make us, that give us this connection, that give us this joy. And, and to me, it's the flaws when, when we realise things about ourselves. And if you're following this gentle rebellion path of me, this is the path of the gentle <clears throat> rebel is to do things gently, by definition, not harshly, not to judge ourselves harshly, but to notice, oh, I tend to have this habit of being negative about that or overreacting to that. Oh, that's interesting. Self-compassion. And then with that awareness comes the ability to gradually let that go. It's like, well, that's obviously served me because it's protected me in some way. And now I don't really like it anymore. I don't want it. So then it, it's safe to go. It's a very gentle process. It's it's often the opposite to a lot of um, more, more kind of pushy self-improvement things. So within that, you know, discovering a so-called flaw within ourselves, something that doesn't, a habit or a belief that doesn't help us anymore, with the release of that comes um, this satisfaction from growing in life, from learning and growing and changing and 
that creates joy and space. So our flaws give us the ability to connect, to have more joy, more space, to accept ourselves more. And in accepting ourselves more, we're able to see that other people's things that did irritate us, it doesn't matter because actually we love them anyway, or we love them because of that, because it makes them human. And we now have more compassion because we have more compassion for ourselves. So perfect, perfect means being human. Perfect means having so-called flaws. Perfect means being a work in progress. It's the one and the same thing. They are not opposite. And they are also opposite in a nice, playful way. <laughs> you can hold both in your in your head at once if it, if it helps you. And if it doesn't, are they the same? Think of them as the same. Whatever works for you, whatever whatever just creates more joy in your life however you want to look at it you are both perfect without changing anything without worrying without doing anything you are perfect and a work in progress and the work my work and my work for myself and and supporting others is to let go of the idea that there's anything fundamentally wrong with you there's nothing there's nothing fundamentally wrong with you. You are perfect with those habits and beliefs that you want to let go of because they don't they don't work for you anymore. But they did work for you. And that version of you was perfect as well. And, and in the future, you'll let go of some more stuff and you'll develop more happiness habits and you'll be perfect. But you're still perfect all the way through. You're perfect for where you are right now. You, you are perfect. Full stop. So. Hope that helped. I hope that's lifted you and made you feel like, yay, I am perfect and a work in progress. And they're the same thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If this resonates with you, please use the like, subscribe and share buttons to help other people find their way here too. And please do go to www.heidimark.co.uk forward slash the one minute mark with an E to join my mailing list and receive my free one minute life changing audio practice. <laughs>